Good afternoon, class. Welcome to week five lessons. A picture is worth a thousand words, where we will be focusing on isometric sketching fundamentals. So let's get to it. Okay, at the end of this lesson, uh, it is our objective to have you to understand how to draw and interpret visual representations of an object. Okay, you're going to also understand how isometric and multi-view sketches give you, as the designer, the ability to express your, yourself easily and articulately when designing a product. Lastly, our goal at the end of this lesson is for you to understand how to communicate information using engineering drawings and measurement conventions. Okay, if you have not done so, um, take a look at the resources you want to study and take in that information um, with regards to activity 1.2, sketching reference and sketching line types. Um, to successfully complete this uh, lesson, you're gonna need a ruler and you're definitely gonna need isometric graph paper. Now, the whole purpose of using isometric graph paper is to, because isometric graph paper will make your sketch easier. It will allow you to see isometric views easier. Uh, the width and the depth grid lines are oriented in a 30 degree angle and the grid spacing will help you correctly represent lengths along the three primary axes. So the proportions are accurate. Okay, so now that we have read and analyzed the lesson text, let us have fun and practice our isometric sketching. So let's do it. Okay, so your assignment um, it's going to consist of several isometric uh, objects that you're going to have to sketch in isometric form. Um, you will see the examples on your screen, as you should see right here. Um, you are to click each image of, of the object you will sketch. Next, you will watch the lesson video and review the lesson, the sketch examples. I can't stress that enough. Each of your isometric sketches will be submitted as a discussion post. And when you, dis when you submit your sketch as a discussion post, you, you are to um, go to two of your classmates' sketches that they posted, and, I'll, and you need to comment on, this, on their sketch, share helpful ideas and thoughts, okay? So number one, you're gonna see the form example image Go ahead and click on that image. And once you click on that image, it's gonna bring you to the discussion post, isometric sketching, form example image one. Okay. Okay, your form example image one looks like so. And when the, before you start sketching, you want to analyze and determine the overall width, depth, and the height or the, or the length of the object. So with regards to the example on my screen, you will see that this object has a depth of 11 spaces. It also has the width, I'm sorry, it has the width of 11 spaces. It also has depth of three spaces and it has the height of six spaces. Now, if you take a look at your isometric graph paper, each line represents an intersection point on your isometric graph paper. Okay, so let's just move on to the next step. Okay, on your isometric graph paper, um, you're going to choose a point to represent the bottom corner of the box you will sketch. So let me bring up my annotation. So when you, when you find, so if you take a look at these intersection points, the intersection point is when all of the lines, the, the 30 degree angled isometric lines and the vertical lines, when all of those lines come together, that is an intersection point. So you will choose an intersection point. Place a dot on it and you will also put your ruler on that dot and draw a horizontal line just like so. 
okay? So your drawing, everything is going to start at your horizontal baseline. So since, since this drawing, let me just, let's go ahead and, since this drawing has a, three spaces um, on your right side or your depth of three spaces, I'm going to count three intersection points from the horizontal baseline. One, two, and three. So I'm going to draw that line just like so, okay? And we also have 11 spaces over to your left. So I'm gonna count 11 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm gonna put a dot right here. And it's imperative that you use your ruler. I do not want to see any jagged lines. So I'm going to draw my line. Just like so. And now we have six spaces for my height. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as a rule of thumb, we always want to start with your your, your width, your depth, and your height lines. These primary lines right here is how you're gonna start every one of your isometric sketches, okay? So let's just pause right here with the annotations and let's just move on and my annotations are going to stay. All right, so once you, once you determine your, your proportional, your sketch, you want to go ahead and just continue sketching just the way I am showing you. So I'm going to continue sketching this. So, so from this point, let me bring my annotations up. Okay, so from this point, I am going to draw six lines up. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And from here, I'm going to draw that line. And this is six spaces up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then once I have this much, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish the isometric sketch. Now, as you are sketching, you will actually see the the image just kind of jump off the page. So this is three spaces over, one, two, and three. And we're just gonna go ahead and fill this line in right here. Just like so, okay? So see how I started with my horizontal baseline and I determined the dimensions of our isometric rectangle. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we, we have our, we have filled in our isometric sketch of our um, square thus far. And now, once we have done this much, you're going to actually, you're going to always reference the object you're drawing, and you're going to jump back, okay? So right here, you just notice that there's three spaces up, one, two, three, okay? So what you're going to do is put a dot on those edges where you see the three spaces, so The way I would do this, I will put a dot right here. Is it gonna allow me to put a dot? There we go. And you're gonna put a dot right there and you're going to use your ruler to fill in that line, okay? Lightly. And then you're going to also reference back to the image and you're going to add construction lines to represent additional corners of your form, okay? You're gonna do the same thing right here. Now, 
when you add condition, additional construction lines, you are, let me find mine, okay. So, so when you are finding the additional construction lines, this line right here is not exactly, it's not on, whoops, it's not on the, the grid lines, the isometric lines. All right, so, but you just need to use your ruler draw a straight line from point A to point B, just like so, okay? Okay, and then after you, you're gonna continue filling in the construction lines. Now, once you have filled in all the construction lines, you're gonna trace over your construction lines with heavy object lines to identify the edges of the object. And you're gonna repeat that process until your object is all complete, okay? So when you are finished with your, your sketch, make sure you shade the faces that receive the less amount of light, okay? One, one way you can do that is use the hatch mark in parallel lines, but you know, you can do it any kind of way, just make sure you shade it in and um, take pride into, in your work, okay? Now, take a look how we use the, the isometric square as a, um, as a guide to draw our sketch um, proportion, okay? And now once we, once we have our isometric um, square, that's where you're going to draw, sketch your image with inside that. So if you are going to sketch a, a tennis shoe, Okay, you're going to draw an isometric square of the dimensions of your shoe. You can, of course, you can scale it down. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and sketch all three proportional sides within that square. Okay, 